Alrighty, um, hi guys. Uh, today I'm just going to be doing a quick recap of my walk around the Isle of Wight. I'm just going to be showing you the line that I did um, and showing you bits and pieces like where I camped, uh, the way I went, uh, which can hopefully help you if you are planning on doing the trip yourself. So as you can see here, this is the route that I did. I started in Cowes up here, East Cowes. I got the ferry from Southampton uh, into East Cowes and I did the route uh, clockwise and it ended up in West Cowes five days later. So if we zoom in a little bit here, I basically just started walking straight away. The first part of the trail is quite a lot of road walking to be honest. As far as I know, there's not really a way to walk around this bit here. So for the first part of the trail, you have to kind of walk through a lot of roads basically before you start to get to the coast. Another reason why I decided to do it this way around because I could at least just get this kind of part out of the way. It was a bit of a slog at the start, but you just kind of get on with it, I guess. Um, so all this is just basically me walking along the road. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Eventually you get to Wooten Bridge, which is pretty much the first time you get to the seaside. Um, as you can see, there's a little squiggle here because I basically sat down for the first time, had some food, just enjoyed the view over the harbour really. It's quite a nice place to stop to be honest. Um, but again then, as far as I know, you've got to just rejoin the road. I think this was where obviously you can just finally get away from the road and join an actual path. So you cut in through the forest here. This is another place where you can, I think this is Fishbourne. Yeah, this is Fishbourne Terminal where you can also get a ferry to if you want to. Uh, so you carry on. There's quite a cool abbey here. So as you can see, I kind of stopped here for a bit there's a little farm here with some pigs and goats and things so I stopped to have a look at that lots of tourists around this area so carried on walking down here cutting through this woodland um, this was quite a nice little church a ladies walk okay finally you're sort of getting towards ride I think it started to rain a around this point so I really just kind of picked up the pace and just walked really really quickly down Spencer Road round and finally properly to the coastline um, to ride Esplanade if that's how you say it, ride pier basically. The rain was getting pretty heavy so I basically I used these toilets and then just basically took shelter here the reason why it's so squiggly is because I've probably stayed under the shelter for these toilets for about half an hour. Finally, when the rain stopped, I carried on. This was where it started to get a bit good. You start to walk actually along the coastline. So I walked along here for a quite a long time. This was lovely, got lots of nice shots. This is where it starts to get really good. I won't go into the too much detail, but this is thoroughly enjoyable. And uh, where are we now? So we are in Sea View. Okay. Anyway, there's a bit here where you have to kind of cut through the houses again, but there's quite a lot of that to be honest in the Isle of Wight. So carried on here. And then this is a really, really cool bit because you come out to Priory Beach, which is a really nice, quite secluded, quite empty beach. And I thought about camping here, but 
I decided in the end it was a bit too early so I walked kind of through this forest and even in, in this forest I kind of walked around a little bit looking for somewhere to potentially camp but it wasn't really possible again I thought about it here but yeah I thought it was a bit too early and I just couldn't really find anywhere suitable so I decided to press on and in the end I just ended up persevering and then coming to this stretch which is called St Helens Duva and there's a lot of flat ground around here pretty open to be honest but it was getting a bit late I was pretty tired on top of like traveling from my house uh, near London and getting the ferry and everything I'd walked around 15 miles I think so I wanted to try and camp here it was pretty open so it was a bit of a risk but in the end I walked over here and I found like just a, a little secluded spot in some trees right next to the path so it wasn't ideal but it seemed to be getting pretty quiet so I ended up camping there for the night and actually it worked out pretty well on the second day I got up and left pretty early, walked straight across this. This was a lovely, lovely walk. Didn't really have much food, to be honest, for some reason. So I just decided to press on. I think it was because I didn't have much water, so I couldn't, couldn't make myself a proper breakfast. So I left really early and just like pressed on. As you can see, it's all very straight. I'm not really stopping much, but there's some lovely like houseboats along here. Um, there was a cafe here but it wasn't open for some reason at that time um, so I pressed on this was a lovely lovely walk it was a lovely day actually so it was, the walk was starting to get really good this is where I finally found some water I stopped at these toilets basically <laughs> and just as a tap so I just filled up there. That's one thing I would say about the walk. It's a strange thing, although you are more in civilization than some of the walks that I've done, it's actually harder to find water because um, there's no running streams or anything. You're not in the mountains. Um, so you kind of have to rely on public toilets or asking a pub or asking some people. Obviously I did find some toilets here and there, but just make sure to carry uh, as much water as you can really uh, especially if it's a hot day like it was on this day so carried on you have to cut kind of through here at this point I was getting super hungry I think um, oh yeah I think I got here and again there was just some cafes that were just closed um, I went and asked this pub and they it was around 10 in the morning I think and they weren't opening till 12 so getting a bit frustrated uh, but you know carried on for some reason the path I think here was closed so I had to go all the way around walk along the road carried on down here and then finally I got to this place and it was a lovely little bar the nab bar where I had a huge breakfast a huge delicious breakfast looking over the sea basically so fantastic little place after that i carried on and i got to yeah this this place here culver battery i think again it started to rain about this point so i put on my poncho as you'll see in my other video Just quickly walked down towards sand down i believe got to sand down and I think I sat down overlooking the sea for a bit obviously sand down very very touristy lots of people um, lovely place but I just kind of pressed on through it because I didn't want to faff about um, I just had a big breakfast just nothing really to say here just me be walking a lot here I, got, I think I got a little bit confused the way to go, to be honest, because because I thought you could go down here, but it didn't seem to be obvious. Anyway, I ended up walking up 
towards Shanklin Old Village, which is lovely. That was lovely to see. Um, but it was a bit of a detour. And just down here, down these roads, which was nice, but I wanted to be by the sea. Oh yeah, th no, this was, this was lovely actually. This, this was where you get like some really good um, coastal views. Really, really nice coastal path walk this. And then you come down to the seafront again. So, oh yeah, this is a great, this was a great little spot. Just a really easy flat tarmac walk along and the weather was super nice here. And it was getting towards the end of the day, but this was, yeah, this was, this was a lovely little walk. And then I, obviously I got to Ventnor, which again was a bit of a sort of touristy place. Lots of people on the beach for good reason, obviously. Nice place, but it was a bit too busy. I think I had a little sit down here before heading onwards. This walk is really lovely because you're just following the sort of cliff tops. I think it was at this point I was really starting to think about somewhere to sleep. But I sort of carried on. I, was, I think I got a real second wind at this point and I was just persevering, really enjoying it to be honest. I think at some point you're actually supposed to head up onto these cliffs here. And I don't know really where I went wrong with that. And it might have been somewhere around here, but I found myself in this situation where I had walked for quite a while off the actual path. And I actually came across some signs that said that you weren't allowed to go any further because of previous landslides. So I'm not condoning this, but um, I did just carry on in the hope that I could find somewhere secluded. It actually worked out really well because I found like a secret path down to the sea. And then this was where I found my secret campsite where someone had obviously camped before because there was a chair and there were remnants of a fire, um, that kind of thing. Um, but this was a lovely, lovely campsite because I was right next to the sea. It was a glorious day. I had a little fire and I was very well sheltered. So that was day two. Um, I can't remember how much I did. I think it might have been like 17 miles or something. Uh, day three. So day three. It was a bit of a nightmare getting out of this place, to be honest because I think, yeah, I think I was supposed to be up, up here. And I think I was supposed to have walked up here or, anyway. So I had to kind of clamber up this, as you can kind of see, it wasn't the easiest. And it wasn't really an official path. Anyway, it was kind of a long rounded way, but I got onto the path and I was on my way. Now this is where it started to get hairy because this day I'd heard that well, major winds were coming in. So I wanted to make good, good headway at the beginning. So I got a good early start. So this is the most southerly point. St. Catherine's Lighthouse, I think. Oh yeah, I stopped here for a nice uh, snack before pressing on. Now the wind really started to pick up here. Um, honestly, I think it was like 70, 80 mile an hour winds that day. The worst day to be doing this section of uh, the Isle of Wight. Really, really stupid to be honest, but hey, I was there. So this bit was a bit strange because there was, oh yeah, it was like a little theme park of some kind. So I kind of came down, took a bit of a wrong turning there, almost ended up in the theme park, and then ha had to go sort of around it. Bit of road walking here. This point, Chale Farm. 
is where I cut back onto, well, onto a footpath and headed back towards the coast. Now this stretch of the walk is absolutely fantastic, except for me, it was super windy, so kind of difficult to enjoy it fully. Well, one of these places I stopped and took shelter from the wind, had some food, and then basically this whole walk, you get to a few points like this where there's been some landslides, so you kind of have to go, oh God, what did I do here? Oh, that's, that was a real nightmare. I went like this, and then I went like this, thinking that I was gonna be able to go like that. And then I even thought the footpath went this way, so I ended up having to go back all this way. What a nightmare. Anyway, carried on. These are the sort of things that happen on these walks. Part of the adventure, I guess. I just carried along these lovely, these lovely cliffs. It's a bit of clambering up and down here. I think a few of these places I just thought about staying at one of these campsites. Honestly, I can't tell you how bad the wind was. It was horrendous. I don't think I did much filming that day because it was just really, really bad. But, I mean, I've made pretty good progress. Grange Chine, I think I managed to fill up some water here. Grange Chine. I'm just basically pushing on, but it's lovely views. If you have a nice day, absolutely fabulous down here. Oh yeah, this is where I'm really starting to get a bit fed up of the wind and really starting to want to find somewhere to stay. So yeah, I decided to cut in and try and get to Compton Farm. So I did a little bit of a detour here from the actual coastal path and I cut up here and stopped for the night at Compton Farm. Lovely place. Um, it was a, there was only a couple of us camping that night actually because the weather was so bad and the, the lady was very kind. She said that I could camp in between uh, these camper vans to give me a bit more shelter from the wind. I mean, it didn't really help that much. It was still incredibly windy that night, so much so that I found it so difficult to sleep. It was about two in the morning or something. I couldn't take it anymore, so I, <laughs> I just jumped into one of the camper vans. Obviously, I didn't make a mess. I just slept, tidied up afterwards. So, Compton Farm, thank you very much. So sorry for using your camper vans without permission, but thank you for the stay. Day four. This is obviously just probably me walking around, like trying to find the farmer and paying. And this day, still mega windy, still mega, mega windy, but a lovely day's walk. As you can see, we're walking along the cliff top here. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And it's a really, really fantastic walk here. I think this was the biggest day that I did. Um, I got to Freshwater Bay pretty early. Um, wasn't many people around. I think this bay probably gets quite busy in peak season, but it was empty to be honest, apart from a guy doing some, um, what do you call it? Um, detect, detectoring, detectoring, looking for metal. Yeah. Um, and then obviously this bit is, so what is this? This is the uh, Tennyson Down. Yeah, this Tennyson Down is great, isn't it? Um, so this is where you're walking towards the needles. For me, again, oh my God, it was so windy, so windy, but beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You've got these incredible sea views. I mean, look at that, you can't, you can't argue with that really. So I'm just walking along, basically persevering in the hope to get to finally to the needles, which was another reason why I went clockwise was because I wanted to end up or have like a destination of the needles or make it feel like I'd made it there. So that was a lot of fun getting to the needles. I've been there before, but it was fun to have like walked all the way around the island and have got to this point. I thought about just not actually going into 
the actual battery it's called because it, it's something I think it's like five pounds which I kind of thought was expensive but I thought you know I need to do this I need to do this I've come all this way and actually it was worth it because I had a hot drink and just rested my legs and had a nice um, pasty I think so thank you very much the old battery and then I just carried on carried on here we go back down Tennyson down past the main car park this is this is Heedon Warren there's a bit in the video where I walk under a tree that's fallen down and that just shows you the kind of wind that I was dealing with now we're getting back towards the north side of the island. Now what's this? Uh, Totland Bay. Oh yeah, this was lovely. This was lovely. Totland Bay, I was just persevering basically because I was full of food, happy as Larry, and just enjoying the day really. A little bit here where you have to kind of cut around the road, but you've got to do what you've got to do. Then you go through this kind of holiday camp down some more roads. There is quite a lot of road walking, um, but there's also a lot of cliff top coastal walking. I just thought it was cool to walk around an island. And then we're getting to Yarmouth. Ooh, um, Yarmouth Bridge, finally getting into Yarmouth. This is where I'm feeling like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Obviously Yarmouth, this is another place where you can get the ferry to, so you can start a hike from there. But for me, that didn't really work. I was hoping that you could walk down there, I think, but you, I don't think you can, so you kind of have to walk along here. Yeah, I don't really remember this bit. I think I was just so determined. Oh, I think, I think it's because I was absolutely shattered. I think it was at this point I stopped on this bench and I was feeling like a broken man. Um, and I was, again, I was considering just stopping at a campsite because I was so tired, so, so tired. And um, I carried along the road and it's actually at this point, I believe the way you're supposed to go is down this way but I'd seen that there was a campsite here. So I sort of just decided to just cut, cut this bit out, because I think you have to go down this way and then come back anyway, because of this huge river. So I kind of decided to cut off this corner, maybe it's cheating, I don't know. But I got to this campsite, there was no one there, I filled up with the water that I needed, I had a little sit down, and I got a second wind and I just decided to carry on and I I got into sort of the train of thought that actually it's way better to just wild camp and there's lots of space around this place so I persevered carried on down here after the horse and groom I cut in and then I just sort of started to ramble through these forests basically looking for a place to camp it's a little bit tricky um, but I got to this incredible place, Newtown River, where there just seemed to be a lot of flat land. So I wandered around a bit. As you can see, I struggled a bit to find somewhere initially. But I, I ended up camping somewhere here. It might have been there, I'm not sure. But lovely, lovely place. So on to day five, obviously I didn't start recording until this bit for some reason. This was going to be the shortest day and I was just going to get myself back to Cowes, complete the trip. I could have probably done this trip in four days, but there's essentially two half days where you're getting the ferry to and from home. So I just decided to do three days of full walking and two days of half walk in if that makes sense. Also I just wanted to kind of take it a bit easy and actually just enjoy it. I had the time, why not? Um, oh this first this first part was a real real slog because I thought it was going to be pretty quick but a lot a lot of road walking and to the point where there's not actually 
I don't know if I went the wrong way, but there's not even much of a path. I'm walking along like the road, literally having to let cars pass me on some of this. I didn't really care at that point. I just wanted to carry on. Had a little sit down in Porchfield, Thornis Bay Holiday Park. Yeah, this is where finally you sort of get back to the coastline. Uh, the wind had died down today, so it was a much nicer day. I think this was a nice little coastal, coastal walk. This is where I'm starting to get close to my end goal. Got to walk through Gurnard here a little bit. I got to this park in Gurnard, used the toilets, had a little sit down. That's where you can see in my video, I'm sat on the bench having some food. And then I think the rest is literally just walking along the promenade. So just literally walking along this, which is beautiful. Um, my, my spirits are high. I'm feeling like the end is near. I'm shattered, but I'm happy. I'm just walking, I'm walking, I've got this, the, the view, I can see the end basically. So yeah, I get into cows again, west cows this time. I get there around 12, so pretty early, which leaves me enough time to have a lovely lunch. At where was it? Here we go. I got some fish and chips at Corrie's cabin here and I went to the Painter's Arms. They very kindly allowed me to take <coughs> my fish and chips in with them. And then I went on, I'm not sure why I've not recorded this bit to be honest, but I went on and I got the chain ferry back to East Cows and got the ferry back to the mainland. There we go, so that was my trip. Um, around 73 miles in total from East Cows all the way around to West Cows. I did it in five days, but two of those were half days. Um, so I hope you found that useful. If you wanna see the actual walk, please feel free to check out this video here. Um, otherwise, yeah, please um, subscribe if you want to see more like this. Um, I'm hoping to do another walk soon, so catch you soon.